Howdy folks, Nathan here in Ohio. I'm at the TRC, the Transportation Research Center, and I'm with Honda, and today we have a special program for you because we're going behind the scenes with Honda Safety. Coming up in this video, you're going to see crash test dummies, you're going to see pedestrian safety, simulators, sleds that go backwards at high rates of speed, and little characters like that running around in front of cars. Coming up next, crash simulation and visualization. Now, here's the cool part. We're talking about photorealistic simulated vehicles crashing, and it is extremely detailed. I've never seen detail like this, not in the movies, nowhere. And what you'll be able to notice is the fact that they can peel away the skin of a vehicle as it crashes to show you details that you would have never expected. So this is basically a full vehicle simulation uh, showing the crash. It's the same data set, it's exactly the same data set, but this is advanced visualization technique. What we are trying to do here is take that simulation model and make it as realistic as possible, very close to any physical test. So you could exactly see how each structure and members deforms. So all these colors indicate different grades of steel. You could imagine this as an air. Uh, second car that's impacting on your rear end and uh, that's hiding all the body panels showing the deformation of the structure. You could actually look how the structure deforms, observes energy and protects the occupant compartment. Now we get to go to the crash test dummy lab. <laughs> I know, sounds like some really bad rock group from the 90s. Here's the thing about it. It's more than just a dummy. There's a variety of different ones, different generations, different types of dummies, both used as things inside of cars and outside of cars, components, parts of bodies, necks, arms, legs, torsos, you name it. All of that is represented and tested here. In the dummy lab, the main purpose here is to maintain our dummies, make sure that they're responding as they should. In this lab, we maintain 48 full-scale dummies so that they can be repeatable and, and act as a human would in a crash test. Some of the most advanced dummies that we have, including this Terminator-looking guy, has over 130 crash sensors. You can actually see it has load cells on the face, so we're going to be able to understand how that interaction of the, the airbag with the occupant interaction, we can understand that and study that. Some of the evaluation responses, of course, we have to make sure that they're always responding as they should, meaning acting like a human. And so we'll do head drops and neck drops. We'll actually measure the rotation and make sure that it's responding as it should based on its biofidelic or its human-like response corridors and its requirements. We check knees and make sure that the femur and the lower leg responses are correct. And then actually today, we have it set up, we're gonna do a torso impact we're going to drop a pendulum that weighs 50 pounds and it's going to impact the dummy's chest at about 13 miles per hour. And again, all to make sure that that dummy is responding as it should. Had he hit that, we would have gone over to the pedestrian lab to actually see the results. You see, at this lab, you actually can take things like a head and shoot it at the hood of a vehicle, seeing what type of damage happens to the pedestrian and to the vehicle. We perform component level tests to evaluate the vehicle structures, uh, to, to try and make energy absorbing structures if there is a vehicle pedestrian collision. And the equipment that you're gonna see today, uh, the Propulsion of the impactors is done by electromagnets, uh, similar to some advanced roller coasters that you maybe have experienced. And so some of the features that we uh, design and develop here to help mitigate this injury is, as you've seen in these videos, uh, like breakaway wiper pivots, uh, collapsible uh, energy absorbing hood hinges and fender brackets, the plastic cowl structure um, at the base of your windshield where your wipers reside. Uh, we designed that structure to, to crush or crack. Rather than striking a full-scale pedestrian dummy like the Polar 2 here, um, we actually perform these component level tests because they're repeatable, 
and we can direct uh, our focus at a given area on the hood or on the bumper, and we can hit that area repeatedly. Here you can actually see, this is a image or video. This is a shot at a thousand frames per second. Take notice that how the hood is deforming and absorbing that energy to reduce the injury seen by the pedestrian. And again, underneath that hood, we're also working with our stylists to make sure there's enough packaging space between the styling and hard engine room components. Maybe the engine, the body structure, or the suspension. This is using the flex PLI, pedestrian leg impactor. And again, we're measuring the tibia bending moments. So that's actually the bending moments in the, the bone in the lower leg. And also the knee ligament elongation. There is a brand new airbag out there that they demoed. And it's very different because unlike a lot of other airbags that just billow out, this one has a soft pocket in the middle, allowing the head to get cushioned when you go in there, which mitigates a lot of damage when you turn and spin your head. Interesting stuff. This is the inflatable restraint slab. So the primary purpose of this slab is to perform airbag static deployment. So the only thing dynamic in this lab is the actual airbag deployment itself. This lab predominantly focuses on occupants who are what we call out of position, meaning they're in uh, very close to, the close to these airbags, where the other labs, we are focusing on them more, what we would consider an in-position occupant. Today, we get to the next, what I would call, um, generation of that airbag uh, with this passenger airbag system. This new airbag has very unique features in it. One, it's a three-chamber design, meaning we have an inboard chamber, a center chamber behind the sail, and an outboard chamber to kind of create this catcher's mid. Connecting the two outboard chambers is what we call a sail panel. And the interesting thing is we're able to efficiently use the volume of this airbag that's very similar to our current technology. But what's very interesting is behind the sail panel is what we call uninflated volume. What's interesting about this is we don't have to increase the output of our inflators to account for this. And we offer this early engagement, soft engagement for the head to come in and provide this lateral restraint from these angled crash tests. Next is the sled lab. Now imagine this, 550,000 horsepower worth of energy pushing a metal sled up and down tracks. Now what this does is it immediately creates force that simulates an accident and it can be used time and time again at a variety of different angles and that way you can test everything from passenger restraint and airbags. The purpose of this lab is to tune and optimize the uh, restraint systems, meaning airbags, seatbelts, interior components. That's what we do here before we go to the, the final stop, which is the full scale vehicle testing. We realized that we needed to recreate a crash test more than just a linear, from a linear fashion. We had to include the vehicle dynamics to recreate those occupant injuries we're seeing. So some very interesting facts So we have to recreate a crash test, meaning we start at zero velocity and we accelerate it back. So it takes a lot of energy to do that. This machine is very impressive at doing that. It has approximately 555,000 horsepower to, to recreate these crashes. The oil that flows through this thing to recreate the crash pulse, as we call it, can fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in 12 minutes. That's how fast the oil is flowing through here. Here we are, this is what happens, this is where the magic is. We take nitrogen gas, that's our energy. We fill up these accumulators that pressurize oil. This oil is then pushed through this four-stage valve. This is where the magic happens. This four-stage valve goes up and down, controls the flow rate of the oil into this piston that then accelerates the sled buck, which is a reinforced body where we can recreate the crash test and tune and optimize restraint systems without deforming a full car. Again, you can see the airbag is filling in about 40 milliseconds. The occupant, this is Thor coming into it, uh, and, and we're looking at the 
brain injury, as well as many other uh, injury metrics. So again, on the onboard video, you get a really good sense of what this new airbag is doing. You can watch the airbag comes out, that catcher's mitt here hits the sail, comes in, comes around his head and really is able to control the rotation of the head. Again, from another onboard view, you can really see that airbag come out, the sails are wide, coming in, grasping that occupant's head and controlling its kinematic in the crash. We're going to show you a baseline, our current technology, this is industry standard right here. So here you can see come in, comes into an airbag, and you see that higher levels of rotation of the head. So comparing these two side by side, you can see the difference that this revolution of the technology is capable of doing. Again, coming in, catching that head, and really controlling its rotation. And we also had an opportunity to drive around the TRC. Now this area allows us to go up to these mannequins that either jump out in front of us or stand in front of us and allow the car to stop on its own. The system consists of two main pieces of hardware. One is a mono camera, which is usually located up on the, the front windshield, and a millimeter wave radar. And this is located usually in the grill or behind the emblem. We use both these pieces because the camera has some good attributes where it recognizes the size and shape of uh, objects as well as it picks up key characteristics to try to determine whether it's a pedestrian or whether it's a vehicle or whether it's something it might ignore. The radar, it's good at detecting speed and distance and, and position in the lane. So I'll just drive straight, mm -hmm. 20 kph. You'll see we'll get a warning on the meter and followed by a break. And you didn't touch yep. the brake. Nope. That was all the car. Yep. Exactly. So and straight at him? Yep, straight at him. Didn't keep each. Speed up a little bit more. Right? And I'll hold the speed. Yep. This is good. Yep. Whoa! Wow, that was cool. It worked. Yeah, yeah. Now that is an inflated fake car, but it is about the size of a yeah. real rear end. Okay. Maintain the speed. There we go, going 28. Let's see. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah. yeah. It worked! Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to Honda and Ohio State and everybody else involved for bringing us out here for a great behind the scenes safety demonstration. I've never seen anything quite like it. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news views, real world reviews, and more of this.